everyone. Welcome to Social Media Hangout Time. So excited today. Bear with us a little bit. We uh, are here live for one of our first shows. We've tested the water before, but we are here live. Usually these are pre-recorded and put out on YouTube in a podcast, but live uh, we're testing the waters, and thanks to Ralph for testing the waters with us. So our <laughs> Oh, did we lose Janet? Well, Janet is stuck in limbo somewhere. Wow! Janet just went into the twilight zone. She did. That's amazing. That's incredibly exciting. I know exciting. she'll be back if she can. You know, that darn internet connection, sometimes that's the, bon the bummer of the a live hangout. That's right. But All right. Let's give her a couple minutes. If, uh, if she doesn't come back, then we're going to take over the show. We're going yeah. to hang out jack the show. We're going to do that. That would be fun. Let's just say, you know, it's just great to have you here. What's, you know, it. We love the fall colors. We're out of Minnesota. Min and you're so in Minnesota. Fall, yeah, the fall colors are just absolutely glorious. We've got the reds and the greens well, and the yellows. I'm in the How garden. About you? State. We're in the garden state. We're in New Jersey, and uh, okay. we're the same way here. Everything looks beautiful. I've got the windows wide open. Hopefully, we won't get uh, any construction or lawnmowers or anything happening outside the window. That's terrific. Well, you know, in honor, because I know with our guests here, we, you know, we'll wait another minute, and because I know that Janet's recording this. Yep. I see her her icon on the screen. It froze right in mid sentence. It sure did. I know she's at least she has a decent looking face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're looking at her frozen. She did say that before she started the show, she was having some trouble with all of the little uh, widgets in the Google Hangout. So yeah. uh, she said that one thing crashed, and then another thing came back. So hopefully uh, she's rebooting her computer. Oh, it there, looks like I think she's she's coming. back. There she is. Yay! Hey, welcome back! You know what? Would you believe it? My internet actually went down. I believe nice. it. It never does. So believe it or not, it went down. So go ahead, and you guys were probably moving along without me. So that's we were great. just chatting about the beautiful color. So hey, Janet. Awesome. Yeah. Welcome to live broadcasting. <laughs> you know what? I I can go with the flow. I'm like seriously, what in the world? But yeah, thanks for your patience, everyone, and we got it going. So I'm gonna All go right, ahead and I'm let you guys started. chat. Go ahead, and I'm gonna set hey. up. The Take it away, Kimmy. All right. I am very happy here to introduce Ralph M. Rivera. And he is the founder of Ravelor Interactive with his wife, Carol Lynn. And they have a branded service offering called Web Search Social, which provides web search and social marketing to small businesses. And Ralph M. Rivera is also the CTO at Triber, one of our favorite services. And he teaches web development at Manhattan College in New York City. So welcome to the show, Ralph. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was a it was a and warm I, welcome up until Janet left us in the large room. Ditched us. Ditched yeah, us. No that's kidding. right. That's something I said, Janet. You know that's absolutely crazy. I uh, I can imagine. I can imagine. It's just kind of the way it goes. I'm going to make sure that my link is properly in there now because somebody said they actually cannot view it. So we will make sure it's working properly. I will put it over there. But let's go ahead and get started. We want to talk about content curation. Yay. And we're going to talk about content curation for small businesses in particular. And this is an area that, um, personally, I, th I believe a lot of businesses actually just don't even want to do it. So what's your thoughts here on content curation? I am not going to be robbed of my question. We can't start the interview until I get my question first. I got a great oh, question for you. <laughs> Come on, Janet. Get with the game. I was out. I was gone. Sorry. <laughs> Ralph, I have to ask you, have you ever been interviewed by a puppet? Well, I'm glad you asked me that. And, of course, I've, I'm a fan of your show, and I've been listening to it. And I have to tell you, Kimmy, uh, you actually have inspired me because every show that you do, you're building a bridge between puppets and humans. And 
you know, I've been think, giving this a lot of thought how I'm going to answer this question, and I thought, you know what, this show affords me the opportunity to be who I really am. So right oh, here, awesome. live on your show, I am announcing that I, Ralph Remerera, uh oh, I'm a puppet! Oh, oh no, no, I don't want it! Oh. My new boyfriend! <laughs> Thank you for having me. Wait, hold on a second. Oh, wait, hold on. I, I took off my human it. costume. Hold on. Oh, this is. Oh, crazy. you're the best. Hold on. My human costume messed up my hair. Okay. How do I look? Am I good? Oh, my gosh. I love your hair. You ought to come and sit in my chair someday. Oh, fun. Oh, that is great. I love it. So uh, I have to say, this has been a long time coming. I have decided that on your show, I'm going to say, I am a puppet American. That is awesome. Thanks oh, for coming out. I love, love it. Love it, Ralph. Love it. Love Thank it. you, guys. All right. So let's get on with the show. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute here. I have to talk to two puppets now. That's right. Oh, you're so lucky, Janet. I kill you. Oh well, okay. We will we will get on the little more serious note with my two social media puppets here. How fun. Uh so let's go back and talk into content creation. Yes. Content curation is that well, it's kind of the, the similar, but let's talk about this in particular for small businesses and focusing in on like the salon owner with Kimmy. We, we love to teach Kimmy. She's getting to be probably one of the smartest social media puppets out there. But the smartest. Now I got competition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's go into it. Let's start talking. Uh, what What's your first thought that comes to your mind, Ralph? Well, I've written a lot about this, and I've had a couple of interviews and debates about content curation, and it boils down to one thing. Content curation for business sucks. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's a quick interview. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. So no, what so do here's you the think thing. is the biggest challenge? All right, so he here's the thing. Let let's put this into context first before we get too, too deep into this. So first of all, when I'm talking about content curation, I'm talking about content curation specifically for business. I'm not talking about the average person or someone who has... Uh, a solo, yeah, um, like a, a coach or anything. I'm talking about small business, a business who has maybe uh, five or more employees, and they they want to have a social program. So that that's the context on which I'm talking about. And those businesses are universally told that they need to be publishing content in an 80 to 20 percent ratio online. And to me, that's just dumb. And I, I talk about it a lot in my article. I had a couple of debates online. I had one with Ryan Hanley and Dino Dogan. Uh, I had a lot of discussions about this with um, uh, Mike Brooks, uh, uh, all who are fans of puppets, by the way. Um, and they all agree with me that for a business to do business online, they have to be focused on one thing first above all else, and that is closing business, making sales, generating leads. That's what's important. And this 80% ratio, this 80-20% ratio for content curation doesn't seem to do that. It doesn't seem to build relationships the way that we're told uh, it does. So I'm not a big fan of content curation. And that and, and people misread that sometimes when I say that. They go, um, they'll say something like, well, you know, people should be able to publish content that isn't their own. And I'm not saying that that's not the case. What I'm saying is that the 80 to 20 percent ratio is not self-serving and not in the best interest of the business. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. it does. It makes a lot of sense. Sorry. You got an I itch on your head? <laughs> got an itch, good. yeah. Got to get your bangs out of your eyes. So, so this whole content curation thing, the whole reason it got started is because um, I, and it wasn't even something related to my job, it was mostly something that happened just out of the blue that um, was apropos of nothing. I met a business that was a law office, and they were publishing tons of content. And to be honest, I don't remember how I got started, but I, I liked their page and I started, I set notifications to on, I started watching their uh, stream. And over the next few weeks, what I found was I had no idea what that attorney did. I didn't know if he was a divorce attorney, if he was a children's services attorney, if he was a, I had no idea. And it's because they were publishing so much content that was curated, uh, but curated poorly. And they weren't really building a relationship with me because all that content was third-party content. It wasn't about them. So this is this happened, I don't know, we're probably talking about six, 
uh, maybe eight months ago. Uh, and that's kind of what lit the fire for me because I thought to myself, you know, this person is doing this because they're being told that you have to go out there and you have to curate content. You have to post and post and post and post and post so that this way you're making noise. And all that does is it creates this giant whirlwind of noise that nobody can see through. And it's the reason why EdgeRank, and I, I'm, I don't want to single Facebook out here, but it's the reason that EdgeRank has become so um, so aggressive that um, now business posts are only being seen by 2% of people that like that page. So all of this uh, content curation, all that it has led to is noise that now needs to be mitigated at the framework level by Facebook and Twitter uh, and all the other social platforms. Huh, yeah, I mean, that makes so much sense, the noise. It's like this person's noise, they knew this person's noise wants to talk over this person's noise wants to talk over this person's noise, and right. so all it does is get noisy, and that's actually what our motto is. I mean, what is going to make this person, your business, a business, let's just say it's Kimmy's business, different? What's going to make her stand out more and not just be noisy? Well, you have to, you know, there's a very simple answer to this, which is this. Listen to your customers. What are your customers talking about? What are they complaining about? What are they happy about? What do they um, compliment you on? What do they complain? You know, I already said that. Um, anything that your customers are talking about, that's what you need to talk about. That's what you need to highlight. You need to convert that into exceptional content. And that's only half it. That's 50%. The other 50% is people who aren't your clients but are your prospects, they're probably giving you some pretty good feedback. If someone hires you, that's great. They become your customer. But if someone doesn't hire you, you have to ask yourself why. Why they didn't hire you. Uh, was it cost? Was it value? Was it something else? And then you can address that as part of your social media campaign. Because at the end of the day, your social media campaign, it's about business. And one of the things that a lot of people in our industry do is they say that social is about building relationships. It's about uh, tying together social uh, relationships between you and your customers. And that's not necessarily wrong, but having a social relationship with someone doesn't put money in the bank. Uh, having a sale does. So you want to always remember that the ultimate goal of all of your social um, uh, programs and campaigns all have to end with a sale. Hmm. Right. I have to adjust yeah. my chair. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Uh, well, awesome. okay. yeah. yeah, and you know, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I do think what has been happening out there, especially lately, whoa, <laughs> especially lately, is that the noise has overcome the end all goal. And I really like right. what you just stated. Uh, yeah. It's. And you know, I'm going to take issue with one of your pri prior guests. Uh, there was someone on your show a couple of episodes ago, and that person, you asked that person, well, what can someone do to cut through the noise? And that person said, well, what you should really do is post more, maybe because you're not posting enough. And that's completely the wrong answer. The right answer is post better. Not post more, post better. Mm -hmm. I well, like it. Mm -hmm. You know, and great content, really, if it's adding value, and it really is when you post good content that's valuable to that audience, to your market, it, that's what helps get it to go viral. People will like it, they'll love, they'll share it, and then you start gaining that visibility because of what other people are doing for you, not necessarily how much you're doing for them. Right. I mean, yes, I, I, I love the way that puppet brain of yours works. That's absolutely right. Oh. No one is ever going to close a sale because you posted something awesome from Forbes. They're going to post something because they read something that you posted, or they looked at an image that you posted, or they watched a video that you posted and that content served a need that they had that they were willing to then exchange money for. You know, and when we talk about content curation, let's talk about some of the areas to post it on because I know that with some of the clients that I cut hair of, they're in business and they talk about they're not getting any results from maybe it's Facebook, but it's typically because they're on Facebook so much but none of their customers are. So, you know, taking that content and knowing where to post it. Yeah, and you know what a lot of people do on Facebook, and I, I know I talked about Facebook before, and I don't mean to single Facebook out, um, <laughs> but the other thing that people do a lot of times is that they'll post to Facebook using their personal account instead of their business account, 
and that's a real um, that's kind of self defeating because having a personal account it has certain barriers that that are good from a personal perspective but from a business perspective you don't want those barriers to exist uh, I know a local business and they post only through their um, their personal account and then they hmm. post very little on their business account and what ends up happening is they get a lot of uh, momentum on their on their personal account and then they, they have a skewed perspective because they start to think well this means that my personal account is better but I'm willing to bet you that if they they put as much energy into their business account as they do their personal account they'd get that same uh, energy happening on their business end. Yeah, that's always been a battle of mine too. Is like uh, you know you have the personal, especially when you're running a business with the same name, and so you know do you do? But you can't have the apps and you can't have the the all the stats. It's not the same, and people, right. you know, it's just not the same thing. So I completely agree with you. As a local business, they they've got to be focusing on that page. Right, and you need to as a business. Uh, you need to establish some thresholds for your time. In other words, you need to set up time, dedicated time, to sit down with all of your social properties and look at the metrics. Look at your Facebook stats. Look at your Google Analytics. Really make some decisions based on what you think is what is working, as opposed to what you think is working. Correct. Absolutely. Well, and you, the analytics too from the website. I mean, you want the traffic to really go through the hub, you know, which is your home, your foundation. So if you're posting tons and tons on Pinterest and you're not getting anywhere, then you really need to take a look at those stats. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, th that's the part that is, well, it can be the part that's very time consuming. Because as you, you know, uh, posting something to your social properties, especially if you're using some kind of a scheduling tool, can take very, very little time. And that's, that is the uh, allure of content curation that it's so simple because let's face it creating good quality content that is specific to your business and meets the needs of your customers and your potential customers that's really hard that's really time consuming and content curation solves that by making giving you a simple answer to a complex solution which of course is the wrong way to go about that but on the flip side to that when you're doing your um, when you're posting to social or you're creating landing pages or you're tying in a uh, a social campaign with perhaps Facebook ads or um, what's the other thing? Uh, uh, Your oh, Google, Google AdWords ads, or Twitter right, ads. AdWords, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. all of that stuff ties in together, but you have to look at the analytics. We ran a campaign the other day. We ran three different campaigns against our uh, marketing game changer kit, which is a free downloadable resource that we, we make available uh, through Web Search Social. And the three campaigns we ran did nothing. They underperformed where we wanted them to perform. So what did we do? Well, well, the one thing that we didn't do is we didn't run the exact same ads again. We t we fine tuned them and we tweaked them, and that's a a big piece of the puzzle for so uh, small businesses is that they have to be willing to adapt and change as they go, uh, and not just post stuff haphazardly. Hmm. Does Absolutely. That make sense? Take the plan. Yes. Absolutely, and it's. It's that check and adjust, you know, making sure that the things are working, but not changing completely the entire plan. Sometimes it's just the headline they need to switch up, right? Or a picture, yeah. Right, and people often the other the other thing is that people often think that creating content is people make it harder than it needs to be. Content does not need to be a two thousand word post. Content can be a seven word sentence that you post to your social channels. It can be as simple as that. A seven-word post can be just as productive for your business as a 2,000-word blog post. You're right. You're right, as long as it's getting across the points that you brought up earlier. Right. That it's, it's not just for noise. Right. Because that's where people are sometimes with those types of posts. You know, hey, let's just get something up. You know, right. I've been guilty of it on Facebook. Now, am I guilty of it on Google Plus? No, and does, you, so let's talk about those different, the different platforms too. I mean, what what do you think about the differences with the you know the new Google Plus algorithm versus the Facebook algorithm where we're we're battling for attention so badly? Well, hmm. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. Uh, Ryan and I we're gonna Ryan Hanley of Content Warfare. 
uh, we started this conversation on the Webster Social Marketing Podcast, and we actually got a little long-winded. We're actually going to have that conversation again. By the way, Ryan Hanley, secretly a puppet. Did you know that? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, secretly a puppet. That's a, that's a whole costume. If you look at his podcast, his Content Warfare show, if you look real closely, when he looks to the right or to the left, you can actually see the seams in his costume. <laughs> oh, no. That's awesome. Look next time. So we gotta have him on a show with all the puppets. Yeah, what you want to do is you want to have him look to the look to the left or look to the right, and then you'll be able to see the seams. Anyway, um, Ryan of course loves Google Plus. He's a big Google Plus fan. Yes. Um, I I don't dislike Google Plus, but I have one thing to say about Google Plus, which is this: of all of my clients, people who pay me money to do what I do, none of them are on Google Plus. So for me, what is my incentive to be on there? And that's a let's say that's an unfair question because that doesn't mean that I can't open up other opportunities on Google Plus but Google Plus isn't any really any different than any other platform so I guess to answer your question uh, Janet Janet's your name right? Because <laughs> yeah. there's no there's no lower third so I'm, I'm not really sure Janet. <laughs> no, we have major issues today I know. Okay. <laughs> so to answer Janet's question um, I don't have a preference on social platform I think the the question goes back to what I said before which is who are your customers and who are your potential customers and where are they? Because if your customers are 80-year-olds, then you shouldn't be on social media at all. Right? Well, I don't know because, you know, we have this lady in Minnesota. She's 113 years old. Yikes. And she had to lie to get a Facebook account. Really? And literally, she was just on the news. It was so funny because she's trying to learn Facebook to connect with her family. She was 113 years old, and her 85-year-old son was teaching her how to use Facebook. Wow. Well, that's the point there. That's the hook there, that's, that she, yeah. she's using that Facebook account to connect with her family, not necessarily yeah. to look for ads or, or, or do business. I get it. And I think Janet just went into La La Land again. She did, didn't she? I'm, I'm beginning to think she that did. Janet doesn't like us. Hey, while Janet's gone, do you want to, since you and I are both here and we're both puppets, do you want to talk about who yeah. else is secretly a puppet? Who else is secretly a puppet? So, you remember you interviewed Dina Dogan from Triber? Yes. Is he now a puppet? He, do you think he's a puppet? I think he could be a very good-looking puppet. He's a he's definitely a puppet. No human can have a goatee that good. I know. <laughs> he's great. I love watching his polls, too. He's a lot of fun. Yep. And that's typically what happens is these puppets are having a lot of fun. Right. And you know, it's you know, there's a lot of lot of things that we can do as puppets that we can get away with. <laughs> that's right. But the real person can't. That's so right. it is kind of fun. Oh, but, that person's you know, back. And it was funny because, you Great. know, I became the puppet because by accident we were just gonna do some videos and some still photos to create content, you know, for some of our channels. And it just, I went to help Janet out, and here I am. She's like, you've got to be on our show. So well, it's you know working what? out pretty good. You on our show and talk about it a little bit more. You bet. Yes, yes. We've got a few more minutes, so let's definitely get into that. Uh, and I didn't lose my Internet this time. I think my uh, computer, I don't know, it's just a bad day. It doesn't like live, I guess. Welcome um, back, Alice. <laughs> That's the first. Uh, I've been called Farah before, but <laughs> Alice and Farah Blossett, you bet. Uh, so let's <laughs> talk about your show. Let's get into what what made you decide to launch it. Tell us the format and and all about what people can hear there. Sure. So we just launched the uh, Web Search Social Marketing Podcast. Uh, it's been on air for a couple weeks now. We hit episode 18 today. And uh, we just got listed in Apple's new and noteworthy for marketing uh, late last week. Nice. So we're really, really, really super excited about Good that. For you. And uh, we actually, we've been talking about doing a podcast for like a bazillion years. And uh, at some, some time ago, we were in New York with our friend Cynthia Sanchez. And I was telling her all the reasons why we had some kind of a barrier to create the show. And she just kind of looked at me and went, yeah, stop talking about why you can't do a podcast and let's focus on why you can and just do it. And that kind of really kicked us in the rear and uh, got us motivated. And a lot of people helped us along the way. But our podcast, it's about web search and social marketing. And what we want to do is we want to challenge the status quo. So when we hear things like, hey, 80% of your content should be curated and not about your business, we want to push back against that and help people figure out how to use web search and social marketing 
to generate business, generate leads, and make money. Yeah. So what's the, what would you say that in the next 24 hours somebody could could do? Because I love how you say you, you, you want to go against status quo. And there are so many marketers out there that just say the same exact thing over and over because they heard it from that marketer over there. Yep. So, so what is going to make uh, somebody stand out? What, could, what action step could our audience take in the next 24 hours? All right. So I'm going to throw you a curveball here because okay. it has nothing to do with, uh, well, it's kind of like, it's kind of related to social media. But here's what everybody who is watching this show uh, live or in the replay should do in the next 24 hours. They should go online and go to every single search engine, not just Google, but Google, Yahoo, Bing, every single search engine, and search for your name. And then make a list of every place that you appear and make sure that every place that you appear is identifying you properly. So there's lots of people that I know that if I Google their name, I get their job from you know their, their last two jobs, but not their current job, or maybe their email address is wrong, or their phone number is wrong. Uh, these are channels that people are using to contact you, and if those channels are wrong, you're never going to know it. So you should make it a point to periodically Google yourself and Yahoo yourself and Bing yourself and find out what people see about you because in your mind, you I'm using the universal you, not you, Janet, but the universal you, in your mind, all of your information out there is perfect, but I find that most times that's not true. So that's my tip. That's an awesome, awesome tip. tip. Mm -hmm. and it's simple and it's simple so people can yeah. easily take action probably take 15 20 minutes of their time to just uh, go and check them check out how they look online that's right so, so you have a free some free giveaway can you tell us a little bit about that as we finish up sure so if you go to marketing game changer kit uh, we have compiled over the years all of the resources that we use uh, resources like uh, our LinkedIn profile worksheet our social media calendar, and a ton of other stuff, a so marketing uh, plan guide, uh, stuff that we've used or we've used for clients that people have said, hey, this is really nice, can I get a copy of that? We've compiled all of that stuff and we've uploaded it to Marketing Game Changer Kit and you can get it for free. Wow, oh, that's so kind. Thank you. Those resources are so valuable. And we update them all the time too. So. Um, and, and as a matter of fact, if you go there and you're looking for a specific resource and we don't have it, shoot us an email because that's how we add resources. We add resources when people say, hey, you know, I'm having this challenge or I'm having a potential problem with search or social or whatever it is. And then we'll make a resource. If we think there's value in us having a resource like that, we'll create it and we'll publish it for free. Wow. Wow. Well, that's that's great. So, yeah, definitely. Everybody needs to go download that source. Yep. And I think I'm heading and there don't, forget, <laughs> don't forget to go to websearchsocial.com slash podcast. We'd love for people to listen to our podcast and rate and review it on iTunes. That's one way that it can help us kind of get our uh, podcast in front of people and getting people listening. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And, Kimmy, why don't you finish up with uh, with your boyfriend here? Oh, yeah. Hey, Ralph M. Rivera. We are so happy that you were on our show. And it was really a nice surprise that I actually have someone that now I have connection with. That That's has, right. Well, you don't have pink hair, but, you know, you got kind of a cool curl going there. I don't have pink hair today, but tomorrow oh, you never know. You, know, you stop in and we'll, we'll take care of that for you. Nice. But I just want to say thanks so much for being on our show. We will post this, um, you know, where people can download the content with your links. Um, coming up in a couple weeks, we'll do that. And then, you know, we appreciate it. So thanks for coming to Social Media Hangout Time. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Ryan. Bye. See ya. Bye.